All right, guys, this is my Mandalorian Season 2, Chapter 16, review, reaction, spoilers in 3, 2, 1. So right off the bat, we already know that Mando is on a rescue mission, hence the title. You know, he's got Boba Fett on his side, he's got Cara Dune, uh, and, and they're going uh, to find Bo-Katan and, you know, a little bit of her crew. Um, and, you know, it's all a rescue mission to go and find Grogu. And what's cool too, you know, Bo-Katan, she, you know, she's going to tag along because she has other ambitions of her own where she wants that dark saber, you know, to rule Mandalore and Mando, he's got the coordinates for where Moff Gideon is. So of course she's coming on board, you know, they can kind of tag team and work along with each other to get and accomplish what they need. So you, you got a crew that was kind of what we figured going into this episode. They find Dr. Pershing who, you know, he's the doctor who's doing all these experiments and like type of cloning different things, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Uh, but they find him and he's pretty much forced, you know, to tell them kind of the whereabouts of, you know, Moff Gideon's ship, like where Groku is being held um, and where Moff Gideon is and where the dark troopers are being held. Um, so they can kind of plan out exactly what they're going to do once they get to the ship. They find Moff Gideon's ship and do they kind of stage a pirate chase with Boba Fett kind of shooting at them so it looks a little real um, and like they're being attacked by a pirate of some sort. Um, and once they get in, it's a slaughterhouse for the stormtroopers. And by slaughterhouse, I'm talking about the ladies who are on this ship. Like, the, the ladies get shit done. That is another quote from the boys. But these ladies, man, they threw down. That was some girl power. That was beautiful. Executed beautifully. I love that scene. Mando ends up branching off on his own, you know, to try and go find Grogu. Before he can even do that, he has to deal with the Dark Troopers. And man, let me tell you, y'all, that scene, you know, he's trying to, because you got a whole crew of those Dark Troopers that are trying to come out. You know, they're very, you know, they're, they're robotic, you know what I mean? Uh, they're, they're droids. Uh, but, you know, he tries to lock up, you know, the door where they're coming out and one ends up escaping. And y'all, let me tell you, we seen what one of those Dark Troopers did to Mando, like, Face bashing this guy, you know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh, it, it was just crazy. I was like, I didn't know that they were that powerful. Like, I didn't know that they were that strong. Uh, so I could only imagine like a crew of those things. It was not looking too good at all, not at all. And then here's the thing: once uh, you know he's, you know he beats the dark, you know trooper with his Beskar spear. You know, thankfully. Uh, and after that, once he does find Grogu, you know, obviously Moff Gideon is there with him and he has the dark saber ignited. And there's particular dialogue I found very interesting with Moff Gideon in this scene, you know, because he says this child is very special and, you know, his DNA and his blood, that's what he was studying. And it has the potential to unlock, you know, uh, bringing order back to the galaxy. So with that doctor that they, you know, you know, were working with and he was doing cloning type stuff. And, and, and by the way, I talked about this in this book on a video I did on TikTok where I was saying, you know, they talk about Palpatine, his return and how he was a clone and Palpatine used his consciousness to go inside of this clone body. And I believe when, you know, Moff Gideon said they're trying to bring balance back to the galaxy. Well, you have to think of what's going on with the galaxy right now. It, the empire has fallen. So they may be trying to bring back their leader, which I think is hinting at the cloning stuff with Palpatine. And dude, if you have not read this book, definitely read it. But I thought that was some interesting dialogue from Moff Gideon. We also finally get to see Moff Gideon in combat. You know, him and, uh, you know, Mando, they're going toe to toe. Uh, Mando's got his Beskar spear. Uh, Moff Gideon's got the dark saber. And that duel was executed beautifully. That was, I was not disappointed. I really did enjoy uh, seeing that fight. Um, and, and obviously, you know, Mando, he ends up uh, defeating Moff Gideon and taking the dark saber, which was really cool to see. I really, really enjoyed that, especially for cosplay purposes. Cause like, yes, I can finally use this with my Mando gear. So super awesome. Um, but here's the thing. I think it was all a part of the plan, you know, uh, with Mando defeating Moff Gideon and taking the, the dark saber. If you listen to a lot of what, you know, Moff Gideon was saying, I think he kind of planned it out that way, you know, and it was kind of a, a kind of poke at Bo-Katan, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Now, again, with the dark saber stuff, you know, when Mando walks into kind of uh, the room where everyone is kind of hiding out at right now, um, Bo-Katan seems shocked and unamused that he has the dark saber. And, you know, Bo you know, Mando's walking in, he's got 
you know, Moff Gideon cuffed. He's got baby Grogu with him. We're good. Everyone should be, you know, celebrating. But she doesn't seem too excited about that. You know, and 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 Moff Gideon knows why. And he's like, I'll tell you why. Because the dark saber has to be claimed in battle. Like you have to, you know, uh, basically earn your rights to wield its power. And it got me a little confused because I I'm somebody that watched Clone Wars. I'm somebody that watched Rebels. And I remember, maybe some of you guys out there can help me uh, who are maybe deeper into the lore and, and maybe remember more than I do. But I remember Sabine, she had the Darksaber and then I'm pretty sure she gave it to Bo-Katan in Rebels, if I'm correct. So I was a little confused on, uh, you know, the fact that like they have to win it in battle and she didn't just take it from Mando when he was trying to give it to her, but she couldn't, you know, accept it because it has to be won in battle. And now it seems like they're setting up things for like now Mando, is he going to be the leader of Mandalore? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, but I was confused on that. So any of my Rebels watchers out there, maybe you can help me in that thought process. Because I was like, well, wait, Sabine, I'm pretty sure she just gave the Darksaber to, you know, Bo-Katan uh, in Rebels. And, and, and now it's a thing of like, it has to be one of them. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was a little confused on that. So... And, and there are some episodes of Rebels that, you know, I have to rewatch for sure. Um, but maybe you, if, you, if you guys have watched, maybe you can help clear that up in my brain. Because I was like, I didn't understand that. Because, you know, just the history of it. It just didn't make sense. So, yeah. The, going on, the Dark Troopers, you know, uh, Mando, he opened up a gate that kind of blew them out into the vacuum of space. But, you know, they, they can fly. So, <laughs> they came back. And I was wondering, like, what the hell were these guys doing? Just exploring space throughout all that time that stuff was going down. They finally come back. But anyway, um, the Dark Troopers are back. And they're headed towards the gang. And it does not look good. I didn't think that the gang had the firepower honestly to take these guys down yeah they got the dark saber and you know you got the mandalorian gear and their best car is pretty strong but we seen what one of those things did to mando i was like you got an army of these things this does not look good at all and a mysterious x-wing flies into orbit and gets onto the ship and y'all when i seen that green lightsaber when i tell you that i lost it when i tell you that i bro Y'all don't even understand, but I tell you that I lost. Look, y'all remember that scene in Rogue One when Darth Vader was tearing shit up? He was in that hallway and just slaughtering, you know, the people in the in the you know Rebel Alliance. Y'all remember that? Luke, Luke Skywalker had that moment in this episode where he was like, "These dark troopers were just nothing," and it showed you a, a plain difference between a Jedi and the capabilities of Mandalorians. You know what I mean? Like, man, these Dark Troopers were nothing compared to Luke Skywalker. My boy was just like, boom, boom, boom. It was, oh my God. Like, I was jumping out of my seat. Like, almost pissing my pants. And like, t tears of excitement. Like, you guys don't understand, man. Like, this was crazy to see. And I, other people have been talking about it. And I've even been saying this too. Like, I wanted to see prime luke skywalker and boy boy did we see prime luke skywalker and how cool is it that mark hamill came back to play you know luke skywalker you know they obviously did their cgi stuff uh which they st still did the same thing in in the last jedi right or was it the rise of scott the rise of skywalker i can't remember which one it was but it was just cool to see him come back like, I was hoping they would do it. Part of me didn't think they would, but then to actually see it, I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. Y'all know, when y'all seen that green lightsaber, it was over, man. Oh, man. And, you know, and, and this show in general, it has those Return of the Jedi vibes. And when we seen Luke, and not to mention the end credits, which I'm going to talk about, it just, that was the icing on the cake. You know what I mean? To, to that vibe, to that tone of Return of the Jedi. You know what I mean? Like, this is the Luke that we've been wanting to see for a very long time. And I just want to say thank you, Dave Filoni. Thank you, John Favreau. Uh, everybody on the team who, you know, was behind this project. Like, this this is what the fans have been wanting, man. And, and they delivered and went up and beyond. So, I, it was hard to sleep. It was very hard to sleep last night. Here's the thing, though. I know a lot of you guys, like myself, are a little, a little bit concerned. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but we're a little bit concerned. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we know what happens if we're talking continuity. 
what happened to Luke Skywalker's, you know, Jedi Order that he was building up. And, uh, you know, we know about Ben Solo. We know what he ends up turning into, and we know a little bit about what happens. And if Grogu ends up completely staying with Luke, I'm a little fearful of his future. We can just leave it at that, right? But we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But here's my thing, though. I, I don't think ultimately that Grogu will stay with Luke. I don't. I think this is going to be the opportunity to see some cool shit from Grogu. Like, now he has the opportunity to unleash his Jedi powers. Imagine seeing Grogu with a lightsaber come, or you know, further seasons. Like, I think this is that opportunity where we'll be able to see him doing a little bit more. Not just being cute, but he's going to grow up. He's going to get a little bit older and start using some of those capabilities, which I'm excited about. And then I feel like he'll eventually turn, you know, return back to Mando. That's just my opinion. So, yeah. And here's another thing. What do you think Grogu and R2-D2 were talking about? They had a moment, if you were paying attention to that. They were kind of talking to each other. So I'm curious what they were conversing about. Like, maybe they knew each other? Because you have to think about it. Grogu was training, you know, as a young Padawan, you know, back, you know, before Order 66. So he, it's, chances are he probably does know R2-D2. Or R2-D2 is like, holy shit, you look just like this one green little dude I knew back in the day. I don't know. Let me know what you guys' theories are about their little conversation. And then Mando taking off his helmet for Grogu, man. It just, it just hit the feels. You know what I mean? Like, it's no longer about the creed. It's no longer about being a Mandalorian. It's about, you know, his love and his attachment to this child. You know what I mean? And obviously we've seen he, you know, got desperate and he went up and beyond and through the galaxy to make sure that this kid was safe and that he delivered his promise to him, that he would deliver him to his people. Um, and he just generally cares for him. And to see that that moment, you know, where he took off his helmet and, you know, they just kind of connected with each other. It, it just hit, it just hit hard, man. I absolutely loved it. Um, so I, I understood that moment and I appreciated it. And then those end credit scenes, y'all, on Tatooine, man. We got uh, Fennec Shan, you know, she's chilling with her boy Boba. Boba Fett, we got the book of Boba Fett, y'all. I'm ready to read that book. I am ready to, I'm gonna flip through them pages, let's go. I am ready to read that book. Uh, and Disney is smart as hell, because how many of us were asking after the Disney Investors Day, like, I'm surprised there's not gonna be a, a Boba Chef. A, Boba Chef. I'm surprised there's not gonna be a Boba Fett show, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of us were asking that. Uh, and, and a lot of us were speculating like, well, maybe they're going to kill Boba off, but that didn't make sense because you just brought him back. You know what I mean? So you saved the best for last Disney and touche, touche. For all you guys, um, I'm still on a, an, an emotional roller coaster and, and it's all good. Like it's all good. Um, this was an experience. It definitely was an experience. This is the time to be a Star Wars fan. If you have not watched The Mandalorian, I definitely highly recommend it. Um, wow. It, it just leaves you in such awe. You know what I mean? Like, this was an experience. Like, yeah, Luke Skywalker is definitely a, a show stealer. You know what I mean? But it, it, it just it depicted him in such a way that brought back those childhood memories for those of us who grew up with the original trilogy and, and just loving Star Wars in general. Um, Man, just such an emo emotional roller coaster. And it left me speechless. And I'm still contemplating, like, how I feel. And it's all good stuff. But, like, it, you're just in, in awe. Like, wow. I can't believe, like, that just happened. I can't believe that's... You know what I mean? And, and, and yes, the show is over. Thank God we have the, the gallery to look forward to. You know, and all these other Star Wars projects that are coming out. So there's a lot of stuff to look forward to which I'm super thankful for um, and, and excited about. So yeah, I'm contemplating my thoughts still, but hey, that's that, that's a lot of the stuff that I took away. Uh, comment on this video. If you've seen The Mandalorian, uh, this the, the finale of season two, comment other theories, comment other things maybe that I didn't mention below. Um, and let's converse in the comments. Um, and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Um, my name, got a new name change, obviously, Dadalorian. Um, doing a lot of fun new Star Wars stuff that's gonna be, you know, kind of in, in the brand of what I'm doing and um, on the channel. So, yeah. You can search on all platforms, Dadalorian, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, I gotta change it on Facebook, but uh, here on YouTube, it's, it as well uh, is now Dadalorian. So, man, what an episode. What an episode. Um, yeah, that's all I got, man. I'm still contemplating. Uh, yeah, it leaves you speechless. That's all I can say. So, man. 
here's to Star Wars. Here's to Star Wars. Uh, much love. Thank you guys so much for watching. Ah, this is the way.